What is going on, you guys? It's your boy DJ. I'm back, and I am not breaking a rule, but I'm here today to break down Tina S doing her guitar cover of Through the Fire and Flames. Look guys, if you don't know who I am, my name is DJ. I am the head guitar instructor here at the Temple Music Academy. I say that only to preface that I'm going to be breaking down the techniques and the stylings of Tina S doing this basically galaxy famous Dragon Force song at this point. And behind the camera is Judah, Herman Lee's number one fan who is losing his mind because for the second time, Dragon Force will appear on this channel. Oh no, he's cartwheeling with excitement. It's kind of weird to watch. Judah, please put on pants. If you're new to the channel or returning, thank you so much for the support. Please do me a favor and click the like and subscribe button below. Click that bell notification so YouTube does something fancy where they send you a letter impending doom. I don't know what that was, but it sounded kind of ominous. <laughs> uh, the links to everything we got going on, including Patreon, Instagram, all of that stuff, even our new merch channel. Uh, all of that stuff will be in the description below, so go ahead and click that if you feel so inclined, but let's get in on this. I know of Tina S. I have seen her as a guitar player myself. I've seen some of the videos for herself, myself of her. I have not seen this one, though, so I'll be curious to check that one out. Uh, I know Tina S. is from, I think, France. I want to say Paris. Correct me in the comments below if I'm completely wrong. And she got a lot of notoriety originally starting with classical guitar videos as her teacher seemed to be pushing her to get really good, and then she had a lot of natural ability. And according to Judah... This video has a little bit of controversy to it, so I'll be curious to see why. Again, let me know in the comments below if there's a story to this, but I'm just curious to see how Tina plays through the fire and flames. Guys, I've got Tina S right here. I've got headphones right there. You guys are right there. Magic Finger does the work. Let's jump in because it's a long one. Tina S, let's watch it go. Take one. Take one. Okay. Interesting, okay. We're playing an interval below. Interesting. And she's still nailing it. Tremolo. Okay. Uh, my first comments are going to be, one, I don't know this brand of guitar. Can you guys let me know in the comments where is this from? Never heard of it before. It's really cool. I can see one of the controversial things Judah was telling me is that she's not in pitch correct form with the original recording. And what I would argue is that she actually is. She's just doing it in intervals below. So she's kind of, remember, a chord is a series of notes played at the same time. If Herman Lee originally recorded it here, she's just playing it down here. Still basically the same notes, just in a semi-lower register than that. Probably doing that for playability or something like that. The tremolo picking means she's hitting a crap ton of notes by alternate picking up and down with this right hand. I love it. I love it. Let's keep it going. Ah, good whammy bar. Whoa, hang on. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. So she's playing a power chord using an octave as well. She's doing a 1-5-8 pattern. I would argue that I wouldn't use that fingering shape. It, it's actually quite a bad habit to get into. She's using these three. We should totally be rocking the octave with the pinky. Perhaps she's doing it for that whole like supination, antonation thing to kind of uh, grab some of the notes because it'll keep her in the turn position. But I would strongly advise that she, you guys try and always do power chords this way, not this way. I mean, she's still hitting the notes, but that's like, that's like a big guitar no-no for us around the, the shred part, so to speak. But let's keep it going. <laughs> Good slides, man. Cool, hit the shots. This is a cool chorus. Oh, okay. So guitar, uh, Dragon Force has two guitarists, Herman Lee and Sam, whose last name I'm forgetting, and Judah is mouthing it really aggressively to me from behind the camera. I don't remember your last name, Sam. I'm sorry. You're still a cool dude. And I think you're an awesome, rad person. However... Uh, it looks what Tina seems to be doing is jumping back and forth between each of their parts because I know Sam and Herman play different parts as they play. So props to uh, the arranger of this one. Tina, if you arrange it yourself, sick, nice job. Uh, this is cool. Jumping back and forth between parts is, is pretty difficult, man. I like it. Oh. Oh. 
good relaxed wrist. <laughs> good taps in there too. Got a wah going on? Yeah. So you catch that tapping when her picking hand comes across to do stuff like that, and she actually starts to hit the tapping registers with her guitar pick against the fretboard, which actually makes that really ridiculously fast. Uh, you, you can hear a really good example in this Metallica song one during the guitar solo. He'll do that if you're looking for it, or I mean, look in the original version of this one. You can hear it as well. I like the use of the wah pedal. Can anybody tell me in the comments below is she doing the wah live right now? Is that why I see her right leg moving? That's really impressive to hit the wah at this tempo using this stuff. Sick. Keep it up, Tina. I mean, you don't need me to tell you that. Yeah, we can hear the interval distance again. <laughs> she hit the retardando there. That was cool. That's a sick riff. Little sweep arpeggio. Love these kicks. Oh, interesting. Great dive. Great dive. Wrist is looking a little tight. I wonder if she's got some fatigue going on now. This song is insane, so yeah. Here's that wah again. Nailed the retardando again. This is the big solo section, right? I just love how every background noise in Dragon Force songs sounds like you're reaching level 61 on Mario Kart or something. I love that. Yeah, this is really cool. Kind of reminds me of Cowboys from Hell. Good control of the tempo of the tremolo. She's got good position change. She uses a different vibrato than Herman Lee, though. Use of legato and pinch harmonics. <laughs> Badass. Cool. You see her thumb now? Well, you can see the thumb. And by the way, I just want to point out it's about time the camera zoomed in on this. I would have liked this camera angle a while ago, but you can see her thumb is doing an interesting rotation thing like that. Usually it's caused from uh, when we have to change directional pick slants, it's called, when I want to take the pick and if I'm, if I'm uh, ascending a run that's going down on the guitar like this, I want to angle the pick towards the direction that I'm going. Similar if I'm coming back up this way, then I'm going to angle the pick this way. It's called pick direction or pick slant directional technique. And a lot of times at this high octave of speed or high, high tempo of speed, what we'll do is we'll kind of let our thumb um, rotate like that as the dominant finger holding the guitar pick will control the pick slant and we can see her doing that da -da 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 and she, she's basically going like this like she's just winning nintendo at this point which is oddly appropriate given it's dragon force but yeah pick slants <laughs> no i want to hear that again that was really freaking cool <laughs> Is that in the original song, that Nintendo sound? Yeah, he's, he's shaking his head with pride. Yeah, 
Yeah, that pick and run is great. See the slant? A little different. Okay, cool. That's our wah again. Restring sweeps, dope. This is the tagline. So this is impressive as hell, because what she's doing is she's found the general motif of the solo. What happens is she can play modally. So if I have a singular chord that's being played, a chord can be voiced to equal a series of different scales within it. Now, if there's seven notes that you heard, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, uh, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, that was weird. We'll pretend that first part didn't happen. Uh, what happens is that the scales are actually the exact same scale, just starting on a different note. So if I start on my root note, I get this one, but if I start on the next note, I get this one, et cetera, et cetera. But what happens is if you look at it visually like this, she can have this one and this one and this one in the minor world, the chords that sound kind of sad and the scales that sound kind of sad. And then the other happy ones, which Herman Lee is really good at, and then they blend them all together but see it looks something like that and she knows as a great guitar player that she can start here and cycle through all of them and be hitting the general motif that Herman Lee is. One of you guys sent me an email that said there's no good covers of this song that are one million percent accurate because in the original recording Herman Lee like broke a string or something in the original one. So let me know in the comments below what's going on there. I think this solo is, is hitting it for the most part. It's in the general motif idea. And I don't believe anybody should ever try and cover a solo note for note, pitch for pitch. I think throw your own spin on it. And that's probably what Herman Lee loves. Let me know in the comments below. Let's keep it going. Great whammy. Yeah, see, here's the, the layering. I love it. Tremolo again? Yeah. Here's our main theme again from the opening. Famous for being played upside down. Wonderful job, kiddo. Very cool. And just nonchalantly like, uh-huh, yep, I love it. So right out of the gate, what the first thing I definitely want to say is that don't try and ever cover a solo note for note, pitch for pitch. Throw your own spin on it. I, I've always kind of believed that it was detrimental to the player to try and duplicate what somebody else has already done to that nth degree. Tina followed this rule. That was sick. She took the general motif and the idea and she did like the blending of the notes, which we call modal playing. And she crossed through all of the key signature or the same key signature, all of the modes in a wonderfully fantastic way. She even had some fun with artificial harmonics, making the video game sounds 
even the pinch harmonics where she hits the string with the pick and allows the string to vibrate off the edge of her thumb. All of these things equate to that uh, Tina has a wonderful understanding of the fundamentals of guitar and then the memorization and the overall just fitness level to get this song done. It's a very Olympic style song. For the longest time it was used in Guitar Hero as like whether or not you were any good at it. I don't know the full story. Something to do with like it's an unlockable song or it's the secret ending if you do really good and get all the groupies or I don't know. However, however Guitar Hero worked. Uh, Tina, I think you crushed it. I think the camera work on this is, is pretty decent as well. I would like to see it zoom in a bit more on you. Uh, to see some of those crazy legato runs specifically that you're doing. It's really tough to play legato, which is as minimal pick strokes as possible and hitting hammer-ons and pull-offs without picking them, and to go to the tremolo picking and to hit the video game noises and to get the pinch harmonics. And then she even used some sweet picking techniques, which I won't bore you here, but let me know in the comments below if you want me to explain in a future video what exactly sweeping is and legato is and pinch harmonics and artificial harmonics and natural harmonics and dive bombs and pig squeals. That's a vocal thing. We'll talk about that later. Guys, this was our first foray into Tina S. It was apparently a controversial video. I cannot see why. It was pretty rad for me to watch. Uh, all things considered, this is like the first time I've got to break down a like pure guitar video. Really jacked about it. I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you're kicking ass and taking names. And as we always say, watch it go.